has been a truly momentous week. We've got Trump in the White House, we've got a Republican sweep, we've got a removal of that policy deadlock that we've had for so many years, and we've got real optimism about growth rates in, in the United States as we move from uh, ineffectual monetary policy and zero or negative interest rate policy towards the fiscal policy that we've been talking about for quite a long time, so a very rapid acceleration of that transition. So what asset prices have been moving? Well, particularly the, the, the Treasury yields. So this is the long-dated US Treasury had a very big move in the last two days. Equally, inflation expectations have really moved higher in a big way. This is putting upward pressure on interest rates in the US, which is strengthening the US dollar. And that is uh, meaning that, that many emerging market currencies are becoming weaker and that's affecting some of the emerging market indices, particularly those with large uh, current account deficits and with a lot of US denominated debt. Equally, we're seeing that, that sterling strengthen, uh, particularly against euros, potentially the, the ramifications of this vote uh, spill over into the Brexit negotiating position for the UK government. So when we're looking at portfolios, we really do need to think about this new environment and whether we're correctly positioned. And what we're seeing is that that positioning for low volatility, low growth, um, uh, is less applicable in this new environment, particularly in the US. So um, we're seeing reflation trades, uh, trades into cyclicals, trades into infrastructure, removal of those short positions in, in, in drug stocks. So specifically, here we can see um, the very strong move in US financials. This is a, uh, a sense that the, the interest rate curve has steepened. We've also going to see dismantling of that uh, Obama legislation, the, the Dodd-Frank Act, um, that, 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 that really did uh, impinge on uh, the bank's ability to do business. Equally, we're seeing a very big move from those defensive bond proxy <coughs> investments into cyclical businesses. And here we can see cyclical versus defense index really push high very aggressively this week. That's really been the, the, the movement into the mining and infrastructure stocks specifically. Um, and we've seen iron ore go higher on anticipation of a big infrastructure rollout that, you know, akin to what we saw in China in the 90s. Um, and those UK stocks that are feeding into that, we highlighted a note a number of weeks ago, Ashted, Hill and & Smith, uh, and Heidelberg Cement had, had a very good uh, performance over the last couple of days as well. So the wider implications of this move are that perhaps we're going to a period where global monetary policy is no longer coordinated. We're going to get a more rapid transition uh, away from monetary policy to fiscal policy, which is a change in the capital cycle that we need to reflect in portfolios. We're going to see more buoyancy and more optimism <coughs> in those cyclical parts of the market. And we also need to be aware of our interest rate positioning within portfolios and, and the, the geographical positioning within that. Um, probably looking to be more pro-rising rates in the US and balancing that out in other parts of the world. So looking at the week ahead, um, it is far quieter. We're through most of the Q3s for, for the US economy. In terms of the UK stocks, we've got Taylor Wimpy on Monday. We've got Vodafone, Land Securities, McCarthy and Stone and Home Depot and TJX on Tuesday, and then a number of other non Killick & Co stocks uh, reporting throughout the week. Thanks for listening. That's all from me.